Hello and welcome to another episode, another video of Avatar The Last Airbender. We are going to be talking about Toph today because she is cool and we decided like two seconds ago that we had a lot to say. So she's the one character we're discussing. I am super tired, you guys, because at like three o'clock in the morning, my dog decided that he saw something in like, like hide behind my bookcase. And he spent like an hour and a half trying to dig whatever was there. And I looked and there was nothing, there was nothing, there was nothing. But then he made me move all the books and then he would dig through the books. Anyway, point being, I'm exhausted. There's books all over the floor. I was at lunch at 3 a.m. Lunch at 3 a.m. That was nice. At least you got something yummy out of it. I was just Not yelling really. at my dog to like go to sleep. Or I don't eat on my lunch break, really. So I just sat in my car and was reading One Piece. She survives. Oh, no. Where are you at? I started um, reading again. You started reading again. Let me let me pull it up. Like. Uh, Shonen Jump app, not a sponsor, but please sponsor. Uh, <laughs> I am on chapter 375. Wait, did the new Boruto one come out? I need to check that on, on my app. 600 and something. I win. You started yeah. like forever ago before me. That's not the point. That's not the point. I, I, I started actually reading it on the app and I just couldn't do it because it was just so tiny and I missed so many. Like, it's so freaking detailed, dude. You can expand it. it. You can enlarge. That's a lot of work, first of all. And everything's black and white. And wait, no, no. We're just, wait, stop getting me sidetracked, okay? We're, we're here to discuss Avatar The Last Airbender, specifically tough. And I hope by the time this comes out, you would have already seen the one we did before. With Uncle Iro, I don't know what the schedule is going to be like, so hopefully you did. Look, it's uh, my oh. job to be a gremlin and be unprofessional because whenever you're with me, you're unprofessional. So I'm that's my role today. I just told a story about how my dog didn't let me sleep last night, and then I was reading Manhua, so I didn't sleep last night. Um, anyway, I realized I didn't actually introduce myself or anybody here, <laughs> and it's been like <laughs> so let's do that. I Dr. Elizabeth Sanchez Arvizu from uh, Psychology for Geeks. And today we have um, a returning uh, co host, I will say, uh, Mark. Mark, do you want to introduce yourself and the awesome name for your practice? Of course, yeah. So my name is Mark Davis. I'm a psychotherapist, licensed mental health counselor in Long Island, New York. I am the owner of my private practice, Alchemy Counseling, or Alchemy Mental Health Counseling. Uh, I specialize mainly with teens and young professionals, so like 15 to 30 years old, dealing with anxiety, depression, and mainly suicide ideation. So this is like the fourth time you say where you're from, and I still get it wrong, because at first I was like, <laughs> East Coast <laughs> somewhere. And then I was telling my brother something like that we talked about. And then I was like, oh, yeah, he's from like New Jersey or something. Oh, God, so, do not get that mixed up with. Do not get that mixed up. Listen, listen, it's on the other side of the country. It's kind of like the same. Okay. That's like if I said, oh, where you're from is like Arizona. It's all the same. Or Nevada, it is. It's, all the same. it's hot and dry. And there's nothing around. It is like a red So anyway. Las Vegas, Los Angeles, the same thing. Yeah. <laughs> Desert everywhere. Prostitutes on every corner. It's fine. Hot. Expensive. Fair enough. Okay. Fair <laughs> enough. Anyway, Hope is joining us today because she was lovely and said yes. And also because I had asked her to be a part of the Avatar The Last Airbender podcast episodes that we were doing, which is probably going to be on permanent hiatus now. But I invited her to this one, so yay. <laughs> Thanks. You're welcome. All right. Wait, no, introduce yourself. So I am Hope. I am the host of Mind Brain Movies podcast, where we di deep dive into mental health with, you know, movies and television and pop culture. Uh, I have a special background in crime scene remediation and um, 
my own crazy psychosis, you know, whatever, it's fine. Uh, I, Elizabeth co-hosts that podcast with me. And like I said, it's my turn to be the gremlin because yay, I get revenge now. <laughs> I, I honestly don't think you're gonna last, but okay. Speaking Give it a try. of which, speaking of which, for your viewers, um, oh yeah. So, so uh, I have been referring to Dr. Sanchez as yes. Dr. Sanchez. She she tells me that she wants me to not to call her Elizabeth instead. I feel weird doing that because she's a doctor. I feel she's earned it. So the compromise we came to is that I will be calling her Dr. Gremlin. So yes. just want to give you guys a heads up about that while you yes. watch the video. Who the, who the heck is Dr. Gremlin? Yes, because on Mind Brain Movies, she <laughs> is, that's what's known as her title on on my on our podcast over on Mind Brain Movies. That's her title. <laughs> you know, the other day I was talking to Boone, our other co-host, and I was talking about I needed, um, I... I needed to create a new Fortnite account that I could use when I am working with clients, like Dr. doing Gremlin. session. And I was like, yeah, I think I'm thinking of using Dr. Gremlin for it. But That'd I'm like, a really bad name, I don't know like. if, it, if it would be good or not. I'm still debating. But I do need to get that done. Anyway, wait, Avatar, stop. Co you comment, both, stop. No, comment in the comments below. Do you agree with Dr. Gremlin as the name? Yes or no? Because I think it's great. It's a great icebreaker. Well, my my other one is Kate Gobbler, and I didn't think that was good. So yeah, that's your name on Discord with me. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So tough. Yes, yes. so tough. Wait, wait, wait. So so kind of like in case this is the first video that, that you're seeing, and I think this is like 15 minutes <laughs> in. Um, this is how we roll, people. Uh, I, if this is your first video that you've seen any of us in. I am so sorry, and also welcome <laughs> to the chaos. Yeah, you, you, um, you have two ADHD mental health professionals and Mama Hope. Yes, Mama needs a drink, Hope. Yes. <laughs> um, yeah. So, what was I saying? Yeah, this is <laughs> this is kind of what what happens. But I wanted to talk about the other one that we did. So the format basically is we are going to essentially psychoanalyze one of the characters from. Um, Avatar The Last Airbender because it's my favorite show and I said so. And then so before we actually did um, Uncle Iroh and I think because he's connected with like pretty much everyone yeah. in some way or another we ended up talking about everyone. Yes. And also ADHD we went down a lot of rabbit holes so if you haven't had a chance to check it out check that out first and then you can come back and, and listen to, to this chaos. Um, but yeah today we're going to be talking about Toth. Now before we get like to dive deep or whatever um, what was the top two things that kind of attracted you to the character of Toth? Who, is that towards both of us or just one of us? Yeah. Go ahead, Mark. Well, go yeah. ahead. Yeah. Sure. I mean, she is the quintessential, like, I don't need anybody. I can do it on my own. And to a certain extent, she was right until she found out where that wasn't the case anymore. Mm -hmm. And I, I love that she kind of became well-rounded at the end where it's like, yeah, I'm totally fine being independent. I understand where I lack and I'm totally fine, you know, asking for help in those situations. But for the most part, she kind of, yeah, personifies independence. And I really like that. I dig it. I would have to say for me, um, I grew up as like the tomboy. I had no friends who were girls at that. Like that was me. I was like rolling in the mud you know, doing doing my own thing and, you know, growing up with Tourette's and I was like, oh, it's cool. Like she has a disability too and, you know, things like that. And so I really, I really dug her, um, you know, and it's it, also the fact that like, she's just freaking badass, dude. Like she, she just, she's like, ah, uh, no, I, got this and just like destroys everybody <laughs> no for real i mean forgive the pun but she's rock solid in the sense that like she can she can dish it back you want to go at her you know physically she can retaliate physically you want to go at her with words she can be back mm -hmm. with words if you want to try to cut her down she'll be like dude i don't give a fuck she is right. rock solid i think the only time like 
we saw any weakness was um when it came to girly stuff and i mm. i also relate with that too because it's mm. only in my i my favorite i think quote of my adulthood was a couple years ago when i went to a horror convention and i kind of just i didn't want to cosplay i just wanted to look nice and so a couple of, of girls there like took me in and they like put me in a dress they put me in makeup and my quote of like the weekend was i learned how to woman today <laughs> <laughs> like and that's were, like, you, were you after after that were you like never again no obviously like i'm wearing makeup now like no. i i do wear i am a bit more feminine in my approach you know um and it, it, it's not that i'm not still a tomboy but like i i because that's how i felt with toff you know like you know what? it is nice to look pretty once in a while you know like but at the same time uh, liz can attest to this like i put on makeup you know for the internet and stuff but then there's times as soon as we go off i'm like rubbing it off my face and she's staring at me like what are you doing i'm like i need to get it off like, <laughs> so, like so yes i i woman to an extent <laughs> i know exactly what that's like <laughs> you you also woman same to experience an right yeah personal experience yeah um so yes I, I kind of liked her because um, her sarcasm. She yeah. was just, uh, like like Mark said, like she was just dishing it out. And she's just so funny. Like the she's one- She's so funny. She's so funny. And then I think she doesn't take herself like too seriously. And that's what I love about her. Where like every single time her friends are like, what is this? I'm holding a piece of paper. And she's like, I don't know. I can't read. Like, did you guys remember? Like, come on. I got when, when they're flying, she's like, it's over there. It's what one of you guys will say. <laughs> yeah. There was, uh, I think my favorite one is when they are like trying to protect the, the wall, uh, Ma Sing Se. And, uh, she she digs a hole and like closes it and then Sokka's like oh no it's so dark in here and she's like oh, oh no what no. a nightmare <laughs> she can't see anything it's like but, yeah sorry or like when they're putting up posters she's like I can do it myself slants she's like it's upside down isn't it it's like no sweetie it's backwards <laughs> but she's also just so fucking bad it's like at 12 it was, she's what 12 10 12 12 12 yeah and Mm -hmm. And they're in the desert, and that tower with the owl and the library sinking, and she's oh, basically uh, holding it up herself. By the peak, sand. by the peak, by the way, they like did a diagram, and like where she was holding was like the top of the building. So she's not only at the base; she's not at the base holding it; she's at the top holding it in sand. Like, bro, she's holding this entire thing. Obviously, she didn't stop it, but she slowed it down significantly by herself. Dude, if that it if it was anything other than sand, she would have been like, "Oh, done." Like, like I think maybe the only other person who maybe could have done that was Boomy. Maybe Kiyoshi. Well, I mean, alive at the time. Uh, fair, fair. Like, Kiyoshi should have That's not fair. <laughs> no, Kiyoshi was badass before she no, learned. She she is a badass. Well, I mean, but she was always the Avatar. So you know what I mean. Well, okay. have you read the books? No sure so i i've read both of the kiyoshi books and before she even like she was um in in the books she had the hardest time they didn't even think she was the avatar because she could not access fire water and air like at all like she was blocked and then like she even like held back earth bending a lot of the times too and the few times that she did it was like humongous like she lifted up an underwater volcano up out of the sea floor and that was before she knew she was the avatar and they're like the fuck is this girl <laughs> like didn't she, didn't she do glass bending yep because uh someone slit her throat and in order to save herself she had to bend the glass out in order to stitch up her artery so crazy I, I, Kyosh, Kyoshi's unreal i mean maybe i don't know if it's a hot take or not i feel like Toph should have been the avatar <laughs> No, like honestly, Toph is better than the Avatar because if there's another scene in Korra where she's like, of all the Avatars, you're the worst. And then she's like, you've only known two Avatars, me and Aang. She's like, yeah, the worst. <laughs> I, I, okay, I think part of what 
it, 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 like everyone's so because I don't have I don't think I've ever heard anybody say yeah I don't really like her. Oh yeah, because how can like, you not? Exactly, like she's just so like you said, like so well rounded. Not that she's perfect because she has weird, creepy habits sometimes. Please explain yeah. what happened. And she's abrasive. Well, yeah, yeah. She's, she is abrasive. But what what are her creepy habits? Her toes. Cleaning her toes twice. Well, because she's always barefoot, you know. I mean, because yeah. she feels well. Which, by the way, I, I, remember, really I, which I remember from Cora. Apparently, she can feel everyone on the entire Earth. She by the time what? she gets old, yeah. By the time she yeah. gets to, what? By the time she gets to that age, everyone's like, "Why aren't you with your kids more?" And she's like, "Oh, because she's." Like Lynn is there doing this right now, and blah blah blah. Like when she wanted to feel her, and, and Cora's like, "How the fuck do you know?" She's like, "I know everything. Like I can sense an ant on the other side of the globe right now if I wanted to." She's like, "I'm always with everybody. That's why I'm in the forest alone because I'm still with everyone." That is a but th that is like a state of mind that like no one can comprehend. Okay, yep. we, we're we're getting like super sidetracked by how cool she is, and I think we need to start kind of like at the beginning. So, why do you guys think that she didn't essentially grow up to be sort of like another Suko? Because she, her parents didn't let her do anything. She was like already like a master like mm -hmm. bender, like being able to go toe to toe with uh, Boomy if she wanted it to, yeah, and win. Um, when she was 12 and her parents were like, she can't do anything or poor little princess. Like how, like, why, why was she able to just, because you know how everybody had their like field trip with like Suko or whatever. And I like, came back like, all oh, like, <laughs> you know, like they put Suko. Yeah. And like her, I mean, she did, um, not that she was complaining, but she was venting to him. And then he's not like, yeah, like compared to everyone else, you had the easiest life. Like her parents were there. Yeah, she ran away from home and she had like some problems here and there. Not that it, like to invalidate her experience or anything mm -hmm. like that, but it wasn't anything she couldn't handle on her own. And we kind right. of saw it like in the comic book that I was talking, uh, I was referencing a, a while back. She essentially like, uh, what is it? Not fixes, but um, repairs a relationship between her and her father mm. without her friends. Like she is able to do it on her own um, because she's she's tough. So she don't need nobody well, that, to that come. Was also her. post Iro though, because she she might not have had a field trip with Zuko. She did have like a field mm. trip with Iro, and that's also the time when he sat her down, gave her the tea, and was like, "Hey, look." She's like, I could pour my own tea. And he's like, I'm not saying you can. I enjoy doing this for you. This is my pleasure to do this. Like, it's it's not because you, you're incapable. No, like, he's like, this is my ritual. And you are mm -hmm. now a part of it. And I, I thank you for that. You know, and I think that's when she started to learn, oh, not everything is because I'm blind. It's because they just care. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. I, yeah. I forged your teeth because I wanted to. This is meaningful. It has nothing to do with you. This is about me. Not everything right. is about you. Exactly. He's like, stop acting like a special little shit. Let me do my thing. <laughs> like, but it also kind of makes sense. I mean, she she didn't I remember. She didn't have any siblings, right? It no, was just correct. her. Mm -hmm. right. right. So it was just her being doted on all the time. So it kind of can make sense, you know, with everything that was going on. Why? And again, back to the, the independence. To me. It is all about me in the sense that I need to always be proving myself. I need to always be showing how I'm not this weak, fragile little girl. No, I am strong enough. And everyone from my experience, so I'm going to assume this about everybody, everybody has this assumption about me. And so I need to prove everybody wrong. So I also... But I, I, go ahead. Go ahead. No, I was going to say a big part of that too, though, is how would you feel if your parents literally denied your existence? Because she having a child mm, yes, was a yes. rumor to the Beifong family. Mm -hmm. Like that's everyone true, thought it true. was a rumor. Like either they had a kid and they died in childbirth or whatever. And like, but like they, they, the rumors were, oh, it might have been the Beifong family, but I don't think they have a kid because they were like, we don't have a daughter. We don't have this. And only like a few select people knew about her. So not only are like, 
they denying her because she's blind, but they like denied her the world because they're like, we don't have a kid. We don't have a kid. She can't go out because she's blind. So we're just going to say we don't have a kid, which is fucked up, honestly. Like, what does that do to your child's mind by saying, oh, we love you, but um, the, you're world useless. Know about, the world can't know about you because you're blind. So you are nothing. Like, mm -hmm. what the yeah. fuck? You, well, yeah, your existence is an embarrassment to us. That's a fucked up thing to have to go through. Mm -hmm. But also, n not only that, but there's also like, if you grew up around people that were constantly telling you how useless you were and how you couldn't do everything, right. like it takes a very strong person to be able to say, no, I think I am more than this. And at her age, because mm -hmm. I would have been, I would have bought it. I would have been like, okay, I guess I can go outside. I'm just going to be sad and depressed here for the rest of my life, you know? But it is, I mean, I think what really helped her, because I think she said that she was like five or something when she, she got, got lost, lost and she yeah. met the Badger Moles. I'm a, I was saying Armadillo. That's not close. Badger Mole. <laughs> yeah. Badger -mole. Um, yeah. And I think. That's kind of like what gave her that strength because then she started realizing I am more than whatever my parents said. And the yeah. more she honed that skill, the more she started to believe it. So having that outlet, I think, was sort of like a very huge protective factor for her to be able to develop that independence. That mm -hmm. I mean, also, she was kind of forced to be independent enough because her parents kind of. Right. We also acknowledge that she learned earthbending from badger moles. Well, they were the original like teachers. I just, know, but to like, learn it from that oh, yeah. blind. But I think that's why though she had it was like, like every to funny enough like she everyone else would have needed the handicap to learn from the badger moles because they would have to get into a blind space where she's like, oh, I have a cheat code. I'm already like them. It's still mm -hmm. pretty fucking cool. I'm not gonna lie. No, I know it's awesome. Don't get me wrong. Yeah. It's awesome, but I think. It was easier for her to learn from them because she's like, oh, I can learn from them because they're like me. I can't learn from this teacher who's still teaching me the basics because. Well, I mean, he sucked just in general. <laughs> he wasn't a good teacher at all. He was, he was kind of mid. But, yeah. But the, lower than mid, bro. Like, <laughs> like he wasn't that good. Well, but, okay. So, so one thing that um made me like, it reminded me of when, when you were like, you know, talking about being sort of like being able to learn because she was sort of like them. And the other day, my brother and I came home from, I think we went grocery shopping or something. Um, and he was trying to explain something about the, the router at home, some technological babble. And my brain just kind of like zoned out. And then he, I was like, huh? Like when he finished, like he whatever he was saying. Your poor brother, <laughs> I swear. Listen, listen. And then he said, router, hot, no internet. And I just started laughing. I was like, I should be insulted that like you made it, like you had to dumb it down, but it worked. And I kind of needed that because I was just so tired. And I was like, I don't understand what you're trying to say. And then he just like did that. And I was like, yeah. And he said, like, it's because we're in the same brainwave. Like we think the same. So like if I didn't, if he felt like he was um he wasn't explaining himself well for me to understand, he knew it was gonna work for me. Yeah. Right. And it and it's kind of like uh like having the uh, ability to do really well in school uh in the US. Uh, because you just happen to learn the way that they teach in school. Yep. That essentially is a plus one, I guess, like to your mm -hmm. to your learning. Because that was my negative asked, too. <laughs> yeah, everybody else has a, candy, a handicap be yeah. because of that. So she had that advantage of being mm -hmm. able to really understand and like hone her skills enough to where she could essentially just sense everyone. Mm -hmm. in the world but one thing that i i kind of wanted to to touch upon though is how her experiences with her like growing up and her parents and being blind and stuff kind of led her to isolate herself because sure she knew what everybody was up to but nobody knew what she was up to 
Like mm-hmm. she wasn't physically present. And it's not like us where we're like, hey, hope, like, you know, after this, we're usually like, yeah, you know, I'm tired of like, you know, recording with you or whatever. And then like two minutes later, oh, look at this funny meme that I found, right? And like literally she every, that. every time. <laughs> yeah. So like it, like she would, there was no communication mm-hmm. between her and anybody else. So even though she felt like, oh, well, I'm there with everyone, everyone, Mister, yeah, and like maybe wanted her there, but she wasn't there. Mm-hmm. And, and I'm wondering, and like, what you guys think about that? I think that's something that that it's gonna sound weird, but that's expected from someone of her personality style. You know, they're yeah. incredibly independent. Um, probably some maybe a little bit of avoidant attachment style. You know, which makes sense. Um, again, it's sad, of course, but nothing that's so like. Oh my god, I can't believe she would do that. No, I can totally understand why she would do that. I can totally believe it. I, I wonder if she removed herself because she knew because she kind of didn't really get along with her daughters. A big mother. part of uh what happened to because I know you didn't really watch Cora, Liz. Um no. I watched it once years ago. I don't remember, okay. So I didn't remember where Mark was from. I he like I saw him like last week or something. Anyways, um, so her her daughter Lynn, who like took over the metal bending like police in mm-hmm. um in the city, she was like mad at her mom because her mom basically retired from being the chief of police because her other sister like um got into trouble and like. Toph is like, well, I bent the rules to get my daughter out of jail. How can I be like accountable or how can anybody take me seriously if I'm bending the rules for my kid, but I won't for anybody else? So she retired and she felt so good about that job, you know, and then she's like, well, there's not really a team avatar anymore. I'm not really the chief of police anymore. I'm going to kind of just go fuck off again. So like it. I it's kind of expected because she's like, I've literally been serving everybody else since I was 12. Let's go back to me now. You know, like, yes, yeah, she was very independent. Yes, yeah, she was very, like, brazen about things, you know, but she still, like, served everybody. She made the metal bending school. She made the police. She did all these things, you know. And like had the kids, raised the kids by herself, by the way, because who knows who the baby daddies who were. Who is that dad? Who is that dad? Two, That's what we need to know. There's two different baby daddies. Of course. Um, I mean, it's top. Come on. There, there's, you know, she, there's like been speculation and rumors and whatnot about like who. She like mentioned, she's like, oh, your dad is so-and-so. He was a nice guy. And they're like, but who is that? She's like, oh, some dude. He was nice. And like that was the end of the discussion. Like some random civilian, yeah. yeah. <laughs> He's like, oh, Probably. he looked nice as well. Although there's been rumors about how um the Duke was like one of them, that because like how he like was in love with her. So, mm. so there's rumors. I can I, I did want to touch on something you said before, though. How you know after she left, she just went to back to isolating. Mm-hmm. I mean, in a way, like again, it makes sense. There's what. When you learn the rules to the game that you that, that you're living in, so when she's with her parents, and that's the game. The rules she learned of how to survive is: I need to separate myself. I need to isolate, whether that's yeah. you know literally like in in the house or or her abilities or running away. That's that that's understandable, and it's kind of trauma in a sense. Trauma in one one very simplified definition of it is you know especially after you get out of the traumatic experience or traumatic environment is that you're playing a new game with old rules. Mm-hmm. So yeah, she's in this new this new game, you know, okay, I have chief of police, I have this team avatar, that's great. Well, now I no longer have chief of police position. Now team avatar is kind of gone. These things that were helping me and allowing me to function in a better way, so to speak, are gone. So I'm going to go, I'm going to regress back to old ways of doing things because mm-hmm. I I feel like I'm back in the old game, even though, even, even though I'm in the new game objectively, but I feel like I'm in the old game. So if I'm in the old game, I'm going to play by the old rules. And so that's why she went back to isolating back in the forest. I wonder if her earthbending abilities gave her sort of like an additional 
sensory thing where like if she was able to sense everyone she must have been like hella distracted all the time i'm or, trying to figure out what so everything was you notice that if you pay close attention throughout the show the, the creators were phenomenal they thought of every detail so and this is what i think is freaking brilliant is the creators whenever you they showed Toph sleeping her feet were elevated off mm -hmm. the ground they were never touching anything like they were mm -hmm. dangling off the ankle so like that that was her like cut off so she wasn't distracted by things and i was like that's smart as shit dude like mm -hmm. but why does her feet like why would her hands not be well good enough her back is that going straight to the spot like touching with your feet you're always touching the ground right but like if she's lying down on the ground right All right. she can still sense it but i think she's I, just more adept at feeling it through her feet that probably, next probably is, more um also if if you're thinking of it more of a medical anatomical sense there is the most nerve endings in your body are your hands feet lips and your genitals like those are mm -hmm. like top places with the most nerve endings per area you mm -hmm. know so like if she especially your feet like and not and not even in just an anatomical sense but like if you go into like western and i mean east eastern medicine like reflexology things like that everything is connected through the feet in reflexology so like hmm. it's it's a huge channeling sense it's where you're grounded and everything you know, that gives a, a whole new layer to it do you know why people are ticklish in their feet they're in terms of reflexology what does it mean to be ticklish what does it mean to be I, I i'm lost like if you're thinking about it in terms of like reflexology i guess if you're ticklish what does that mean it means um so tickling uh when you're ticklish it's actually a defense response mm -hmm. to your system and it's like that's why a lot of people are ticklish in like the sides or your armpits or your neck because that's where your vital points are so it's like a defense mechanism to protect those areas is to cringe up yeah like what's your immediate protect... reaction you go this is go like that mm -hmm. right right um although my ticklish spot is weird we're not going to get into that uh <laughs> but tell us i'm not ticklish anywhere except for one spot i'm gonna let in the comments guess where i'm ticklish <laughs> <That's where it laughs> <is. laughs> um but I okay. no uh, cold, uh, <laughs> but but you know so so with reflexology in a sense if you're ticklish on your feet in reflexology that might mean like a certain part of your body is like in distress like if you're ticklish in a certain spot in your foot that could connect to like your kidneys maybe you have a urinary issue you know or things like that so all right um well if you all want to know or join me i am going to do a deep dive into this after we finish recording so you know <laughs> yeah anyway uh wait what was saying i don't know what were okay you so here? okay so one of the things that i that i like about sort of like the the show itself is that each character their personality is kind of centered around whatever element they're able to use yes right and like tough like even her name you know like it's just tough she's tough yeah <laughs> no, and the, the ember island players i was about to say that i miss i'm missing something when okay when they when they go see the the mock play about their adventures and stuff oh. and she's been played by a dude like a like a buff dude. Tough, dude yes I oh my god my that echoes. <laughs> And I love like she's like everyone else. He's like, oh no, she's gonna get mad. She's all like, yeah, yeah that's me. Dude, that, <laughs> she's just that, so excited. That makes me I love Toph. That makes me think of like the memes where they're like, you know who's gonna play Toph? John Cena. Like, cause she even does like the thing. Uh, and she's like, I'm blind. And then it's so, <laughs> like, yeah, live action Toph, John Cena. <laughs> <laughs> but it also makes perfect sense. Like, yeah, there was this person that they they were an earthbender, and they took out an entire army. They were like a one man army. It was it, a one man army was insane. I don't know how they did it. Oh, this must have been a really big tough dude. Yeah. 
I, I I know it was like a nod to like her original character design, which which was supposed to be like this buff guy. Yeah. Or boy, teen. Um, yeah, it was supposed to be your typical like buff dude. Mm hmm. I, I'm I'm so glad they didn't go with that one. Uh, mm -hmm. because there, I think it's just in general, there's not enough representation when it comes to any sort of, um, disability, there's not enough good representation. Mm -hmm. And I just, I just love the fact that everybody kept forgetting she was blind. Yes. Right. Like even her friends who were with her the whole time, like they just kind of, it didn't click. With I know because... this isn't from Toph. She can't write. <laughs> I forgot she was blind a couple of times. Yeah. Exactly. Uh, because she's so, like, just the way that she carries herself, um, the way that she's so confident about everything. And one of the things that I really like, it was that it, a lot of it seemed to be from the way that she was raised, even though she wasn't really introduced to society. She was taught the rules of society and how yeah. you needed to carry yourself. <laughs> um, so when... Uh, they had to sneak into like that banquet for for the Earth King. Yeah, like mm -hmm. she was able to like, like, I mean, she was bullying people, which is she's good at. But still, like, she was able to do it convincingly enough to be able to like get away with it. Yeah, um, which is amazing. Well, because yeah, she was like, oh, this is this person, that's this person. You have to act like this, you know. Um, She's like, oh, this is my servant because I am blind and need an escort, you know, like, so she knew the rules and everything. Plus, I mean, it, it helps that she does literally have a name behind her. The Beifong family has been there in the Earth Kingdom, a major thing for hundreds of generations. That's another thing that they discuss in not only the Kyoshi books, but the Yang Chan books is like the Beifong name. Huge line of like rich tradesmen and earth strong earth vendors like so it's it's like a big thing she it, it, it's it's amazing how ancient that lineage is and how it you know i, I wouldn't say you know a coalescing her because obviously she wasn't the end of it but then i don't i don't know like i, I guess what really it shows okay she's doing her name proud by being mm -hmm. badass inventing metal bending like i don't i don't know honestly I, her I, parents I, were the her, her parents were the disappointments, not they, her. I mean, a hundred percent. I mean, monetarily, they they did they did fine. They they, they, did they inherited fine. it all. They don't they don't count. A fool and his money are easily parted. So the fact that they didn't fuck it up, fair. I'll credit where credits due. Fair, true. <clears throat> but I think that also speaks to what society values, right? Mm -hmm. So the society that her parents grew up in valued the whole have normal kids that can do normal things right that's why they slash wanted to protect her and you know not show her off or whatever but like she still was able to get everything like any sort of like education and everything that she um that she ever needed um but by the time it might be just sort of like a generational thing as well because in her generation it was the coolest thing to to do or to be was a really like really good bender well right yeah there was a war a going on like if you could if you didn't weren't a good bender you were dead <laughs> like it, there yeah was really no way around it yeah essentially um uh, one of the other aspects that i really love about this character as well is how humble she is about <laughs> come on you know she's not but like it's like humble like, i am the greatest earth bender alive well but and she knows it's true so she's not like okay listen i am going to stick with humble i said it as a joke but now i'm going to stick with it because i think it's true because being humble doesn't necessarily mean not accepting any compliments or anything like that it just means knowing your own worth and not playing them up like she knows she's the greatest earthbender it's true <laughs> she is and then like i think there was um she the, the about favorite. it that's not yeah humble. that's not humble i'm sorry <laughs> That's knowing your worth and be humble and knowing your worth are two different things. I mean, to be like, fair, to be fair, 
it's a hair's breadth between the two. It's very easy to step from one into the other, to be fair. What? And also, it's not like she brought it up out of nowhere all the time. Like, it was the conversation they were having kind of thing. I mean, I mean, what I'm thinking about is when she broke out of the cage. And that's when she said, I am the, I am the world's greatest earthbender. I, she she right. I, was, I was thinking more of, I am Melon Lord. Oh, yeah. fear me. Listen, right. role play. But, okay, role play. But then, but then even like when, when she was, you know, the she, what was the, her name when she was competing and she was the blind the bandit. champion? Thank you, the blind bandit. When she was the blind bandit, like, I, I don't know if it's humble to embarrass your opponents. Showmanship, are you, okay? Are, are you scared the pebble, the boulder refuses to be insulted by a little girl? And then she makes him do the splits. I mean, I don't call that humble. I call, I mean, listen, she's 12, all right? Okay, but she's not humble. That's all I'm saying. And which, by the way, I'm not saying you can't know your worth. You can't be like, yeah, I am the greatest ever. But that's humble's not humble. Not the right word. Humble's not the right word. I would I, not say that. Humble is like Iroh. He knew he was the dragon of the East. Yes. He's like, oh no, I just want some tea. It's fine. Why, why you guys got to use logic against me? All right. It's just not, this isn't why I invited you guys to it's, this. It's, okay? it's what I do as a therapist. That's what I do as your this is therapy, Mark. Look, this is what I do as your podcast mother, okay? <laughs> See, I told you we're gonna last. <laughs> I know, I don't. I fall back to my roles, it's fine. <laughs> my life is therapy, Dr. Gremlin. <laughs> you know, you know what? That, but okay, so maybe humble's not the right word. I, I agree with you. But I, I love the fact not only that they made her uh, <laughs> <I find Mark. laughs> uh um, that they made her a girl, one. Yes. They made her have a, a, a serious disability, two. Mm -hmm. And that they made her so confident despite the struggles. Because whenever people complimented her, she was like, yes. Yeah, yeah you're right. I agree yeah. with you. Yeah. And this is something that even now, even though we've had a lot of progress made, um, I think for women, it's still, and, and men as well, it, it's very difficult to just accept compliments in, in general. Right. And um, I am the biggest proponent of that. Well, I mean, I, I, again, I think that, you know, being a. Like, but I feel like, you know, yeah, you're right. I, I am amazing. Like, I feel like eh, it's a bit much. I feel like, thank you. Just thank you. That's it. Oh no, for me, like everyone's like, oh, you're so nice and pretty. I'm like, ew. And they're thank like, you. thank you. Thank you. No, but I'm like, ew. And then I was like, please just call me a horrible bitch and I'll be happy. They're like, oh, you're a horrible bitch. Oh, thank you. Oh, thank you. <laughs> but it, it's her her level of like, I guess, comfort in in you know receiving the praise. Because I think she given that she grew up um and was kind of around high society she probably knew what fake compliments were um right. and was used to them um mm -hmm. all the time or even like you know fake compliments because she was blind right True. she's also i mean i don't know how to put this she's undignified <laughs> i don't know how to have best to put but it but she chooses to and, and that's what she said right like she yeah. chooses to but she i'm knows not saying as a bad thing i'm just saying that's how she is so she's not going to be like thank you that's so nice or like oh you're too kind like yeah mm -hmm. I, I i get it because she has learned to not care to be civil i don't need to be civil to you no one's civil to yeah. me i'm gonna be civil with you i oh all that matters is, is me and how I take care of myself and anybody else. If, they, if they're cool, they're cool. If not, then go fuck them. That's I don't care. Well, I, I think there were, I mean. Until she met her friends. <laughs> even then, because a lot, I mean, she didn't grow up a lot um, when she was with um, the gang, essentially, because um, she started seeing things from like a different perspective. Mm -hmm. And, you know, she met Uncle Iroh and, like, just anyone he met, I feel like, had a life-changing experience yes. uh, hanging out with him. Um, <clears throat> but there's still this aspect of um, just being herself. She wasn't putting on airs. She wasn't, like, being fake nice or, like, you know, cordial with people. She was just herself. Mm -hmm. And it, herself just happens to be kind of rude. Um, I, it's got me thinking, like, 
I'm trying to remember one compliment that she gave. Uh, there, there was one compliment uh, when she was like first teaching Aang how to. Um, she said, "Well done," and like punched him. Yeah, she's like, "Oh, you like finally, sucker- finally <laughs> faced the boulder, Twinkle Toes. Good job!" And like punched him across. Yeah, the room. you you finally got it right. <laughs> so like her her method of compliments is a little uh. M- maybe when she and Katara went out and she was like, you know what, you're right, that was pretty nice. Maybe that was a compliment. Yeah, that was another one. Or um, uh, I another thing too, I think was, um, gosh, I don't, I, I know it's not a compliment, but when she like was in the ocean and Suki went in to save her, but she thought it was Sokka. She like, oh Sokka, thank you for saving me. And Suki's like, um, is me, bro? She's like. Please don't tell anybody. Just let me drown now. It was just like, Sokka, you have very soft hands or something like that. (laughs) Yeah, I was just like, so she she was very happy to be saved by (laughs) By Sokka. Bro, everyone loves Sokka. He's the the fifth, he bends the fifth element. I love that joke. It's the funniest fucking joke to me. I... uh, So one thing that I kind of wanted to to bring up a, a little bit was that when I said that, like, she um, is unapologetically herself. Mm-hmm. Not many people are like that, like in the show and just in real mm-hmm. life. Uh, because sometimes people are like, well, I was born this way, so I'm just going to be, you know, like mega rude. And I'm like, no, because she's still there for her friends. She's still supportive, mm-hmm. sarcastic. Yeah, but, you know, they know how she is. And like, you know, she's able to still communicate. And, and help and support whenever it's needed, right? So mm-hmm. uh, one thing it kind of reminded me is like, my brother and I have conversations about how there is sort of this maybe unconscious movement happening in academia and uh, white color jobs, where it's all about the words that you're using and how professional you are about something. Mm. And I'm like, I just really dislike that because it's just showmanship oh, for who yeah. I yeah. No, no there's, there's so many people just even at my job who just because they know how to put a resume together, they don't know anything else. Like, I'll, they'll show up at my job and I'm like, okay, well, do this. I don't know that. Okay, how about this? Yeah, I don't know. All right. Well, I trained you for the past three weeks. Why don't you know this? Oh, I just don't feel like it. Like, what? 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 Why were you hired? Why? Because they know how to make a resume look. Because they know how to make it how to make it sound good. But like when it comes to those emails, for example, like, oh, how do you professionally say go fuck yourself? Like with those kinds of things, it's more a matter of CYA. What? It, it, and I was like, how do you say this in a nice way? And he was basically. Yeah, how, how do you how do you professionally say go fuck yourself? Uh, basically, but, 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 my, it's, it's my, CLA, that's Brandon, what's my friend Brandon is the the top tier of those emails, by the way, because he's like a high up accountant stuff. So he's like top of the line. So he's like, Haha, you want to say something? I got you. And he will make the most beautifully sounding fuck you email on the planet. And it's like, it's, it's, it all comes down to plausible deniability. Yeah. It's all plausible deniability. That's all it is. It, and and it, you know what? And it, it really sucks, though, because it's really limiting all the information that can be available to people. And I think that's one of the reasons why I just sometimes don't really understand some therapists that insist on just using psychobabble. And yeah, I'm like, nobody right. cares. Yeah. Nobody cares. And and a lot of the times what that happens. Means. I don't know what psychobabble is even. Well, it's just like using all these big words and talking about theories and what exactly, oh, jargon, like, okay. yeah, yeah, jargon. Yeah, like, um, like using every Latin name in the book, but not knowing Latin, like, okay, cool. Yeah, and like, and I'm like, okay, so what I've seen happen some a lot of the times is that I will get clients who come in and then they're like, so I want to, I am looking for this specific therapy and like this thing and I, I want to address like these issues. And it almost reads like, like a therapist did it and then i'm like how did you know which therapy is the best kind of therapy the for whatever like how yeah. do you know this and um 
the other day I was reading this book that talked about how um what well, it's it's the the body keeps the score. I'm I'm finding oh, it. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. yeah, that's what Vandal Coke, yeah. Yeah, and then so there's this one section where he talks about how patients learn how to describe their symptoms based on what the doctors order for them when they complained so if they came in and they were like oh my like my chest feels tight and heavy and then they were like oh you know MRI yeah vagina whatever like <laughs> yeah then they were like oh it's pain in here or whatever right but like it wasn't never like a any sort of like psychological terms mm -hmm. because they had ptsd but they just complain of like uh somatic symptoms and the doctors were like oh you know it can be an ulcer or it can be this and then so next time they were seen that's how that's the words that they use to describe this yeah. thing right so i'm like you can't that's why i'm kind of like still i'm I'm not saying completely against the use of like jargon and especially when it comes to like when we're writing books or when we're writing like like research studies and I'm like academia is for real. academia not a, but like but do it shouldn't be like it shouldn't be. be that's what I'm trying to say like it shouldn't be like that because then it's just gatekeeping a lot of information I understand that there has to be sort of like um a gate because not everyone is trained or can use or fully understand what these things mean but listen i have adhd big words go out the window sometimes and like I, okay mark was like you know she has a phd probably earning i'm like did i i don't even remember like i don't know i, didn't say, the I, I never said the word probably <laughs> but that's what he meant. No, just uh but uh but listen like it's it, it kind of it makes it really hard and like not only with like my adhd but also like english being my second language and a lot of what happens too is um other countries are looking for the u.s in terms of like the research and stuff that is happening here and it just makes it again it makes it a lot more difficult when really you don't people are so oh. so I'll, I'll, I'll give my take i don't fully agree with that because okay. I think it's, I think it's okay that we have our own jargon because I think everyone has their jargon because there needs to be, again, we're talking about the field. There needs to be a um, shared language, a shared understanding. If every single thing was okay, we need to explain every single word every single time that everybody understands. Like people who have no training in it, the pay, the, the, the studies would be like twenty pages long just yeah. on having to define everything. If I can say, okay, we're going to study PTSD. And we know PTSD because we have the DSM, we have, we have the criteria, we know what it means. It's important to have this jargon to start from. If you want to be someone who wants to understand literature, or, sorry, understand scientific literature, yada, 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 there's trainings for that. Just like, you know, when it comes to medicine, you know, we have, there are terms that maybe we don't know, or there's lab values that we don't know. Oh, I took a medical, like, I took a medical language class where it like yeah. broke down like a means without this like itis means this da, 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 da. like so i can break down words well yeah. I, I don't i don't I, think I, that I, necessarily I mean not having it though what i'm trying to say is using it in session that's what what i'm kind of like i uh, i don't think so 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 you're right and, and so you're i think you're half right in the sense that i think no no, no, no mark i'm full right okay I think you're half right. My opinion Fine. is that you're half right. In this the was that... the last time Mark was ever on the board. <laughs> that was the last time. <laughs> the how keto people were going to kick my ass. Um, no, I agree with you, Mark. You'll be on my podcast still. It's Liz who's going to kick you off. <laughs> but I mean, is it, isn't it more fun this way with someone who doesn't fully agree? Isn't that isn't it more fun that way? Um, but the reason yeah. I'm how dare you bring up my hop keto shit again? I'm gonna beat you. <laughs> but the reason I'm saying this is because I think it's fine to use it. I think the big thing we're missing is it needs to be used responsibly. Mm. So, like, like again, the, this jargon, these words, it could be used again as a method of explanation. So, for example, you know, you have many people in with diagnosis. That that that's a big discussion still. Like, okay, is diagnosis a good thing? Is it a bad thing? Should we have it? Should we order? And it depends. For some people, some people use it as an excuse. Some people use it as, okay, this explains what's going on. I now feel more normal. Some people, it's like, okay, that doesn't mean anything to me. I don't give a shit. Help me. Mm -hmm. So it's a matter of it's a matter of how it's used, not the thing itself necessarily. Yeah. Like, yeah, I, I, I'm an example, but yeah. Isn't that what I just said? 
<laughs> well, it's, it, it sounded it sounded like you said it shouldn't be used at all in session. No, I, I so I I'm, I kind of like I so, so try this, to like this is stay her away. From... This is her technique. She goes, she waits till somebody says something. She's she like, you, yeah, yeah. That's she's like, oh, <laughs> that, that's what I'm saying. It's fine. Right. That was I totally so what I was saying. I'm, I'm playing around. I don't know. No, around. no, I I just don't tr I try Ooh, not to, to to be like in extremes because I know like I could be wrong. Like I just don't have like a full idea because I haven't had like enough time to like, you know, reflect on it. I don't have enough sure. information um, for it. That's why I was kind of like tentatively just kind of like saying that's this. We have these conversations. You kind yeah. of, yeah, you have to help like, okay, let me bounce off a soundboard, you know, mm -hmm. you know, and kind of work it out. Yeah. Um, like I, I totally <laughs> forgot uh, about uh, Toph for a second there. Um, <laughs> but again, I, in, in a way, in a way, going back to to her sort of like being herself and like feeling comfortable, um, just being herself. Like, I, I think it kind of some of it does apply to even to the topic that we were just discussing, because if you are more comfortable using those big words or like it's easier for you to express yourself using those big words, then. I, ignore everything i just said right because it is sort of like your reality right it just doesn't really work for me so that's why i was kind of like i don't really know how i feel about that right sure uh that's why i'm like i highly encouraging like other mental health providers to also be in social media and and put content i know it's really hard because everybody has like jobs and lives and creating content doesn't give you any money at all um for the most part, unless you're doing marketing, but even then, um, yeah, even then it's right. But it it really is helpful to have like those perspective, like we were saying, right? Like you had a different uh, in in opinion, and then I was like, okay, yeah, I kind of agree, and I understand where you're coming from. So I need to sort of like reframe some of what I was trying to say, yeah. and and that's kind of what's needed a lot because mm -hmm. we tend to go from one like swing from one side to the other mm -hmm. like either it's good or it's bad or like just like this very extremes uh, of things like there's no gray areas and i'm like we we live in gray areas mm -hmm. like that's all you know that exists and that's again one of the reasons why i love this show so much because there's so many gray areas even the people that were evil they had kind of like a legit reason for like being evil except maybe offside right. like he was just evil uh but, I mean, but I for mean, the most part you know, what of, you know you know what it reminds me of though mm. is that and this is like something that's been like ingrained me ever since you ever saw that picture of there's a two people and there's like a six and a nine on their either end oh yeah and one is saying six one is saying nine mm -hmm. it kind of reminds me like you know you can both be correct if given your perspective mm -hmm. yeah. i i use that oh i was going to use this as an example but i I can't do it. Like I use that with my clients all the time, and I'm like, okay, so what color is this? And like, usually it's a different color on the other side. It's the same. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, it, it gives us like like an understanding um, of that. But if so, if we just keep arguing, like, no, it's a six, it's a nine, it's a six, it's a nine, and then like, no, you're wrong, or like you're trying to gaslight me. Like it never moves to the well. Come over here, and I'll show you, mm -hmm. right? And that would just solve everything. Um, but some, but a lot of the times, or let me go over there and let me see right yeah like we're not willing to extend that we're kind of like no this is what i see and you should see it too and i'm like no and like i do and like i am so guilty of this because a lot of the times i just think that because i know something everybody else does too like it's just for me it's common knowledge and i'm like okay so then everybody knows and then i realize no see, not everybody knows I'm it's called the the person knowledge see i'm the opposite of that i take uh, as Mark would know, the house approach. Like, everyone <laughs> is just dumb. And I just think that, yes, I may know a lot, but I just automatically assume <laughs> that they don't know shit. So... <laughs> Listen, and that's why Avatar is so cool, right? Because it's all about balance. So in between the both of us, we will make the perfect person that's balanced <laughs> about this topic. And would you say that off by the end of um book three she was more of a balanced individual than at the by, beginning by the end of book three yes because she did have a bit more balance with within herself she you know uh 
yeah, by the end of book three, I totally agree. She was more, yes. more balanced. Yes, not more. Balanced. more. Not completely, right. but more. So instead of like the teeter totter, like all the way over here, it was like, eh. Yeah. Not she quite. could have been sand down a little bit more. Not, not quite. It was it was it, but it wasn't it, you know. She needed a little more sand in her life. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> what about well, what all, about when she was she, old? Tough? Well, I was gonna say real quick, it's when she she said, I'm practicing my sand bending, and she made little omashu and she's like, Oh, look at the little bear. But um uh, um old tough. <sighs> uh oh. she she went unbalanced again like she, yeah, she still regressed. she still had the knowledge of everything you know like when it came to her bending she i i'd say bending wise she was like plateaued you know um i don't think, but, she, could, I don't think she could go any higher but there was another thing that uh was very that was very wise of her cuz the few scenes where she was with people like there was a couple of times where they're like Toph, you're like the most strongest person on this planet currently why can't you just go in and solve this she's like one well, i'm like 100 years old bitch you know like she's like i'm old she's like if i keep coming in and cleaning your messes you will not learn She's like, that is also why I kind of fucked off. Because if everyone keeps coming to me because I am the greatest, you're never going to grow. You're never going to learn. She's like, and all y'all are fucking soft. Like, if they could curse, she would have been like, all y'all are fucking soft. I'm tough. Get on my level. Stop being a baby and relying on me. It's like, like y'all are bitch made. Yeah. That's legit kind of like, she said that in the PG version, basically. Um so like yes she was wise in that sense like she knew it was time to to pass on like it wasn't her responsibility but at the same time she was definitely a dick about it if she was regressing but also, I, I also want to answer dr gremlin's things like oh, you couldn't think she got any stronger if she would have gotten any stronger she would have been bending the moon she would have yes. been bending mars <laughs> like, yeah she would, yes. she'd be calling down asteroids like if she'd she be like stronger. stopping the earth rotation <laughs> Meteor bending, bitch. <laughs> yeah, that's if she got any stronger. Yeah, um, but yeah, she regressed. She she was like, I just don't give a fuck anymore. You guys, y'all y'all are bitch made. I'm I'm too old for this shit to care anymore. <laughs> y'all y'all handle this. I'm gonna just live out the rest of my days my days like Yoda in the forest here. Honestly, would you yes. consider that like a regression or more of a balance? I would I would, regression. I would say it is a regression only for the fact that she didn't even go to visit her loved ones you know i'll tell you what i'm sorry i i no, it up here. Oh, no, no all i was gonna say is like one part they were like oh what's it been like a year and they're like it's been 15. oh how time flies you know exactly. like it's just like moving on exactly but i'll tell you why because seriously it, it goes back to how she interacts with people like yes she was still sarcastic and a little abrasive with team avatar but she did get a little softer with them i think particularly mm -hmm. uh katara and then you see how when uh, Katara's daughter goes to talk to her and she's back to being a bitch. So, I mean, it really does seem, honestly, without tact is cruelty. And at first she was cruel. Then she was, you know, honest with tact, mm -hmm. sort of. And then she went back to being cruel. Because she's like, oh, I'll just fling you around like a rag doll. Like, oh, y'all are soft and bitch made. Oh, I'm not dealing with this. No Leave yeah, the, my favorite of of all the avatars. You're the worst. She's you're like, the worst. <laughs> you're the uh, like, like, oh yeah, you're the fucking worst. <laughs> like, damn, if you're gonna if you're not gonna respect me for my dad, at least respect me for my mom. Jesus. <laughs> so that's why I would say it, it's a regression in, in a way. Although, I guess here's another perspective. As people get older, they do get a little crankier. They get kind of you know I don't have the patience for this. I feel like she started off there, so I don't know if it's like a regression in terms of like her just whatever, or just like just full the circle. natural progress is regression for her. <laughs> Dude, I I will say my life goal is to be the best worst old person. Like that is my life goal. When Get I'm like eighty, on. when when I'm eighty, I want to like 
walk outside naked with my robe open and not care i want to scream at people to get off my lawn i want to like go into a store and rob it and then be like oh alzheimer's eh. like i want to be the best wait, old person wait, have you guys that reminds me of that joke have you guys heard seen the joke i think it's like it circulated online a, while, a few years ago where it was like this this old couple that were arguing with this um this policeman that was like writing a ticket on a car right and this couple was just insulting the policeman he kept getting mad he wasn't like responding he just kept reading more citations you know to the car and then the bus came and the old couple got in the bus and left that wasn't even their car they was just insulting the guy for no reason and i was like you it's gotta keep yourself entertained right yeah. that 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 is gonna be me that is so gonna be me like that 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 is mad funny holy shit yeah, I, so, I I I, love I that. hope to get to an age where that's acceptable in some way. I guess. Well, uh, once you also, reach like seventy. Yeah. Well, also like the the be another thing I've always said was like when I reach a certain age, or if like my health has declined to that point, I'm just gonna like rob a bank and get arrested because at least then I'll have medical care. I'll have three hots in a cot. I don't have to clean up after myself. <laughs> like. I'll just no, listen, listen. When when we were in high school, we got, we had like, uh, what was it like, career day or whatever? Or it was like career week, and we got a lot of people coming in and talking like all different classes. At one point, a uh, because we have a huge uh, state prison here, a, uh, a correctional officer came in, and he was uh, like, you know, well, if you get arrested, this is what happens. And honestly, half of the students there, including me, we were like. That actually sounds nice. Like, I don't have to worry about, like, choosing a career, going to college. I can just live there. Right. That's what, like, that no, would be but, nice. like, that's what I'm saying. Like, if I'm old and my health is declining, they get medical services on site. They have their meals taken care of for them. You know, they have, they have yard time. They have arts and crafts. Like, it's honestly, some prisons are better than retirement homes. And you don't have to pay for it. You just got to go to the right prison. Exactly. Wait, there's a movie. Hope maybe you know this one where there's like a bunch of like old sure, guys sure. that are trying to do a heist, like yeah. one last one or something. But they're all old, and it kind of goes like wrong because they're old. Um, it had like Martin Freeman in it. The Shawshank Redemption. No, 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 no. It, it. Are you sure it was a heist and not like they were in <laughs> Vegas having like a last hurrah? They I were trying no to do something they weren't supposed to. I just remember that. I think I know what you're talking about, and it Ocean's was 11. <laughs> no, uh, it's this movie. It was like the, it's called Last Vegas or or something like that. Uh, let me look it up. But it's basically these four older guys. One of them's getting married, and they're like, "Dude, you're like 70, trying to marry a 30 year old." So like, get the Last fuck over Vegas. it. Yeah, Las Vegas. And um, Morgan Freeman's character is like his son has him on lockdown and they had to like break him out because his son has him on lockdown because he's like dad you just he had to escape through the window yes yeah because he was like dad you just had a stroke you can't go anywhere and he's like fuck you i'm going he's like i'm gonna pop my viagra and i'm gonna have a good time like it's just so funny so that yeah that's gonna be me and my posse of like <laughs> old people like just you know trying to rob a bank so we can all get health care in prison yeah yeah um, have, ha, ha, have your like... puppies have, have your dogs with you yeah yes. <laughs> and then like we would just all the money that we'd steal we like we wouldn't like take it i would just like it back to charity or something but like i just like i just people passing by here you go here you go it's like i'm doing this to get caught tell your friends like <laughs> call the police right now honey right like, oh, I'll some, some high school. Sure, I'll buy some alcohol for you. Sure. <laughs> Here you go. Prostitutes for everyone. <laughs> my God. Wait, wait, wait. Okay, so be before we get even more sidetracked, <laughs> there was something that we kind of touched upon and we kept referencing, but we never really like. I feel like there's more we can discuss, and that is the disability aspect of this character because we keep saying oh. how much we loved it but you have thoughts go ahead uh, i don't have a really question wrong. just talk about no, it go. no no no. I, um so i will say the the creators of avatar they also did another show called the dragon prince and oh, what man, i like so what i like about these creators is they do make these characters in general not just Toph, but like um 
what's his nuts who was in the wheelchair who like glided oh, in the air what's his um, name? Um, i forgot I, but I know uh, the, you know but like he, he the was son of the jerk. inventor yes yeah uh you know there was him there was Teo. Teo. yeah um you know, but also he said potato, and I was like, "Yes, potato, <laughs> potato, yes." Okay. But also, I wanted to mention their other show that they did, The Dragon Prince, because not only are there like a ton of people of color and everything is, um, but also there's one character. She is a woman. She's lesbian. She's deaf, but she's also like the leader of this kingdom's army, mm -hmm. like highest general, and she's deaf. A lesbian and a woman like uh, which is amazing you know and like she had to have an underling she's like yeah i'm deaf y'all are gonna learn sign language for me fuck you like <laughs> and they did they they learned it for her mm -hmm. you know and so and that's great so i love the fact that they're representing all these like disabilities and everything they have mm -hmm. like i said they had teo in the in the first one he was in a wheelchair and you know there's um Going back to Cora, to one of the Red Lotus people, she didn't have arms, but still bent water. Like she made, she made tentacle. Dude, like I heard water. that she was probably like the strongest um, water bender mm -hmm. with arms. Yeah, well, yeah, um, because she didn't have arms. You know, there was that all all these things that people with disabilities have, and and Toph being the main character who she is, and just being amazing being blind was at the forefront of it yes but they they showed so many different like dis disabilities and i thought that was the coolest thing ever you know the thing about writing with disabilities is that it is a very fragile balance that you want to be able to bring attention to it without making it seem like you're making fun of it yes. or you're downplaying it or that you know they're blind for blind sake like no this is part of the character it's who they are mm -hmm. you know and it plays a role in in their personality as well that and in their character mm -hmm. development and how interacted with the other characters so it's it's great the, and the way the way they did that balance is amazing it's it's really hard to write these kinds of characters mm -hmm. in a way that is like i said it's res that's respectful and that it's actually well written yeah i i think one of the things that i just don't like about uh some shows that are trying to be more inclusive is that they head in the direction of like oh but it's your superpower you know yeah like it just it became your superpower and i'm like no that's not how any of this works because in like for example in tough they didn't they kind of made it seem more like she was able to achieve all these things despite being mm -hmm. blind right or not that like being blind gave her like this super hearing or whatever you know yeah yeah um so it, it it's not yeah I, I think they did it in in a really good way where it was I, this is like one of the best ways to normalize something mm -hmm. to to sort of be like yeah it's okay you know if you're like this like it doesn't really change how i feel about you it doesn't really change who you are or you know your worth or anything like that it's just means that you do have a negative one you know when it comes to a lot of things where people either have a plus one or sort of like at at average mm -hmm. um mm -hmm. so uh, because i know that we can continue for like another three hours or so um i am gonna cut it short and ask you guys that for like the last question um you guys talk about what would you recommend for people um that are either like writers creators um or they themselves have um a disability what would you what would your last words to them be do you have any i feel like i'm the last person i should be saying anything to them about how to write such people uh, I would say the biggest thing is do the research on whatever you're trying to do, because if you don't do the proper research, it's just going to seem tacky. Uh, mm -hmm. My biggest thing is, like, I have Tourette's. I, I used to be the tri-state spokesperson for Tourette's. I uh, was very involved with the organization you know i'm mm -hmm. a big proponent of Tourette's and 
everyone's like, oh, well, with such and such, were you insulted? And I was like, yeah, I was insulted with X, Y, and Z. But then, like, with South Park, everyone's like, oh, how, how do you like the South Park episode? I was like, I loved it because they did the research. There was a segment where they explained it verbatim. Yeah, they made fun of it, and it was hysterical. But it's because they put the time into doing the research and saying, hey, we know about this that I was like, cool, you get a pass because you spoke the truth and you actually knew what you were fucking saying. So like before you deep dive into any disability, whether it's mental, physical, whatever it may be, just actually look into it a little bit. Don't just be like, oh, well, that's like the hot topic now and let's talk about it. No, mm -hmm. right. really look into it. And that's that I think would be the biggest thing I would say. Just jumping out a little bit, like they also, in a way, made fun of the people who do make fun of ridiculous. Like, oh yeah, it just means that you can say whatever you want, any right. ridiculous thing. Like, and having Cartman do that, no, we're making fun of you. That's a, that's stupid. Right. They did the same thing with the episode on Asperger's. Like, no, that doesn't mean that you have at burgers coming out of your right. ass. Exactly. That's not what that means. It's like obviously they're making fun of them, so, so it's kind of funny, and people think stupid shit like that. Um, but. So I'm kind of also building up what we're saying about the research. I guess part of that also is, is talk to people who have that disability. Mm -hmm. What would they find? What would they find as being disrespectful? Mm -hmm. What would they find as being respectful? What would they like to see in a character who is like that? Um, and and that doesn't and that doesn't mean just to know like okay, you know, my lord, tell me everything. You know, write it for me. That means like okay, so all these things. What about X, Y, and Z? How would that play with you? Oh, you wouldn't like that. What about this? Does this sound like something like like a reasonable challenge? And like they and they came over, out of it in a way that's you know human and it makes sense, but while also being respectful, like you know, that's the thing. It's about it's use that word again, balance. Mm -hmm. Ask, challenge a little bit, try to find that balance. Yeah, uh, and yes to what you both said, and we're gonna end the episode now. I'm just kidding. Um, <laughs> Bye. So, right no, it's Elizabeth fashion. <laughs> I, so one thing that I wanted to add as well was that. I think we're living in a time where many people are advocating for people who cannot. Sometimes in a good way, sometimes in not such a good way. Mm -hmm. Because it reminds me of that um, controversy that was happening, um, this is years and years ago, when they were trying to remove of Speedy Gonzalez from like TV because he was mm. very racist, stereotypical Mexican thing. But us Mexicans, we were like, but it's so cool though. And we love him. Why would you take him away? Oh yeah, there, but it was, was it wasn't it wasn't Mexicans advocating for this. It was other people, yeah, like being like, "Oh, that's racist," and I'm like, "But we think it's funny though." Oh yeah, there there was something like that. They like try to ban certain Golden Girl episodes because of this, and like none of that, like demographic was like oh, we. They're like, we don't give a fuck. It's Golden Girls. We idolize Golden Girls. Shut the fuck up. Like, right. well, <laughs> you know, there was also too like, uh, what's that? I think it happened with Pepe Le Pew as well. Yes, but also with like, I think it was like Charlie. Who's the guy that wrote Charlie in the Chocolate Factory? And like James the Giant Peach. Oh, um, um, oh, the, I think I know the, Ronald about. Dole. Ron Dole. Yeah, yeah. He had he a lot of things that, that that was that were racist for the time. So they did change that. But then it also sounded like they were trying to change anything that hinted at being tall or thin or anything like right. that and i'm like well then how did you describe anything it's just gonna be like this blob of a person it was there like you still need some sort of like descriptors like we can't right. go like too deep into it otherwise it's just gonna be like the story started and it ended you know like there there's not gonna be a anything with there person b they would right. place a and place b <laughs> like, yeah, yeah you you imagine everything however you want they you create your eyes. own story like they, stop they had a to certain a hair color they had a certain weight they had you know a number of legs <laughs> they uh, did you guys ever watch mad tv it's like they had he had an eyes and a nose and he looked like a man like, <laughs> <laughs> you look like small. a man I, 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 oh man mad tv was funny Miss Swan was the best. Look what I can do. Look what I can do. <laughs> I mean, I'm sure some people found that to be to be racist, but I don't know. I think again, at the time, it was it, it, it was funny. I oh, mean, yeah. the actors, the actors, 
I was assume that they did it. Didn't seem to have a problem with it. Well, just I think going back and changing things that at the time that the people who it's discussing didn't have a problem with. I think going back and say, oh yeah, they actually did. Like, well, did you ask them or are you just assuming? Mm-hmm. Right. And that's what they do. It's it's ridiculous. It's it's uh... right. And I'm sure Dr. Gremlin could speak to this even way more than me. I know that there was a whole thing with Latinx, for example, that, you know, a number of people in, in the Hispanic community, Latin community were like, no, we're totally fine with Latino. We don't want Latinx. What the fuck is this? You have a number of people who are for it, a number of people who are against it. And there's like Latin A now, like an A and E. I think it's a different letter by itself. I, I have no oh, idea. Yeah. But like, okay, so part of it is is, is to like, there is the for that instance uh with like how do you describe yourself or how do you want to be you know labeled as i guess in a sense is that it's whatever you're comfortable with right yeah because for example for me if if you call me mexican or or latino or hispanic i'm like yeah um but no, other people are like <laughs> or, <a> that. <laughs> or that too um but there's there's people who are like, well, I don't really fit into, you know, what's the stereotype of this one. So I want to have like my own. And then I think that's why like sometimes other like terms like Chicano or like Mexican. Well, I don't know about Mexican American that much. I don't know that much history, guys. But um, so th- that's like a little bit different. Right. Um, but sometimes, again, we do have people trying to put words in our mouth and make decisions for us without asking us what we want. So, yes. Can I just say Mexican-American is an oxymoron because you're already in fucking America. So, like, it's, like, technically Mexico is a part of North America. Like, that. I don't know. That's just that's just me. But I want it to be two (laughs) names, Hope, okay? I'm just saying. I'm just saying. When it gets gets down to things like that, I'm like, that's just dumb because it's... they're just Mexican at that point because they're they're technically in America or like in North America. That is the like the fucking continent. <laughs> yeah. Okay. So um I am also curious to know if there are we talked about um some of our other favorite uh characters that portrayed um really or disabilities in a way that wasn't bad or as bad um as it as in other areas so i would like to know uh from anybody if they made it this far <laughs> into the, the video like do you, what are you, some of your favorites maybe we miss some um maybe we can discuss those those uh, characters in like a different episode um or something when i sleep and can talk if you made it this far, let us know by by typing Gremlin PhD. <laughs> uh, um, wait, now I lost record. Yeah, so end of episode, you guys. Thank you so much for making it. But before we go, uh, one last time, if anybody wants to do a collaboration or reach out to you guys or just geek out with you, where can people find you? I'll let her go first. Uh, again, you can find me with um, on any social media. You can find me as biohazard underscore Leia, or you can check out um, my podcasts. It's Mind Brain Movies podcast. It's going to be under the Jaguar Sharks. Uh, that's like our production name, but my show is called Mind Brain Movies. I am there with Elizabeth. Uh, my name is Hope, or the Podcast Mom, or whatever you want to call me. Um, and yeah, I'm Mark Davis again. Uh, if you want to find, you can find me on Instagram, Alchemy Counseling. You can also find me on TikTok, The Full Mental Alchemist. Uh, so I haven't posted videos there lately. I'm going to get back into it soon. Uh, if you want to work with me in your New York, New Jersey, Connecticut, or Florida, uh, you can hit me up either through uh, through DM on Instagram. Or if you want to email me, markdavis, mhc at gmail.com. Or if you're a new therapist or student therapist looking to get some training, you know, and, and improve your therapy skills and understand the, the clinical aspects, the hows and the whys of all the things you do, DM me as well. I'm more than happy to help you to improve and become a better really therapist altogether. He's really good. He's really good. No, I was going to show <laughs> your book thank, and I put thank, it back it, up thank there. You, <laughs> <laughs> thank you, Hope. That's a good compliment. Thank you, Hope. Well, you didn't talk about your book. <laughs> That's true. Thank you, guys. See, this is why I have her. She's amazing. <laughs> uh, also, if you're a new therapist, I mean, but if you're not, it's fine too. But mostly for clinicians, and you don't feel that you're super comfortable in helping cl- clients who are dealing with suicide, 
I have written a book. It's called The Alchemy Approach. Uh, you can find that on Amazon. You can also find the link in my Instagram for a digital version. It is relatively short. I did that purposefully. It has all the information you need on how to assess, uh, do measures, as well as interventions for suicidal patients. There's also a whole FAQ. If you have any questions about anything that's in regards to that, I even have dialogue trees of like how you can see those going about and action. And these are based on actual conversations I've had with patients to have an idea of how these things might go out or how, how they're gonna play out rather. And if you have even more questions that are not covered in the book, once again, DM me, hit me up. I'm more than happy to help you out and understand these interventions and these clinical skills in much more depth. Yes. And yeah, that's a wrap for me. Um, uh, and that's my spiel. Um, I, I forgot what I usually say, but thank you for making it to the end of the video. And uh, check out some of other, other panels, some of the other content. I just recently realized that there's a way for me to share the videos from Mind Brain Movies into my own channel. Yeah. I think I didn't know that was a thing. So you guys have to go to Jaguar Sharks and find them. <laughs> um, and um, wait. Oh, yes. And please uh, follow us on our social so you know what uh, other cool things we're doing. We're doing a lot of like in-person community events. Uh, we're trying to do uh, things for our online community as well. I'm going to start streaming, I think, on Twitch soon again. And um, so, yeah, it, it's just a fun way to keep track of what we're doing, what the next um, video is going to be uh, and when it's going to be released because I, I don't keep track of this stuff. Uh, so I don't know when this is coming out. Um, but yeah, and also days. check out our Patreon. Uh, if you wanted to help, uh, we have a Patreon. You can also make a one-time donation. We are a uh, nonprofit, so we can give you one of the paper thingies for tax purposes if that is what you want. I if need not, to get paid more than 15 cents an hour. 15 cents. I said a high five. Be happy. <laughs> And well, you raised it from a nickel to 15 cents because I said I would cook for you too. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Okay. My books are all over the place. Does that include <laughs> organizing my books as well? Oh, no, that's for free. Okay, nice. Uh, I, all right, like, I like organizing. <laughs> uh, and yeah, so uh, don't forget to subscribe, like, share, comment, uh, answer all of our questions, please, in order. <laughs> and if you have any questions for us or any characters you guys uh, would like us to do, uh, let us know. Can't promise anything because I don't even know when these videos are going to be released. So, but we'll try our best. Like, comment, subscribe, support. We love you guys. <laughs> yes. And thank you so much for making it to the end of this video. And don't forget to reframe and re-enchant your... Uh, wait, wait. Let me do it again. Reframe and re-enchant your life. Yes. So and hard. your mind too. <laughs> And, and we will see you in the next video. Bye-bye.